Hey, Reckoners, and welcome back to the bottom of the well. Now, off camera, since the last episode, I tried a few times just to see what would happen, as trying a few runs with a custom Alice, and I encountered some things that I want to show you. Uh, I do, I, 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 I'm under the belief still that you can get to a ending of sorts using a custom Alice, a, a default Alice, and I will resume doing that, but before uh, before that, I just want to show you the things that I saw that were new using the custom Alice, which I kind of just chose kind of at random. So, the first thing I did was, um, I maximized fitness because I wanted to survive forever. I put a couple points in supplies so I can carry everything. Let me put the points in supplies, silver play. Why is it not letting me put points in supplies? The other things, supplies. Supplies. Is it bug? Sometimes this game is super bananas weird. Well, let me do things in general. Skill, fitness, supplies. There we go. I did talk a couple times. So yeah, three in fitness, two in supplies, one in everything else. I don't actually know what uh, the default Alice's stats are. I'm sure it shows you. I don't know what they are. Um, one interesting thing is I'm assuming default Alice has more points in dating because you'll see in a second that since we only have one point in dating, our relationship with uh, chess is uh, far less. So like the very first option we have, uh, us calling him, immediately try to call chess, and we get to him, what's he say? Ah oh, man, come on. All right, we see this stuff already, okay. Well, first I tried calling him, but all I got was a pre-recorded network busy message, but the net still works, so I hit him up there. I mean, we did most of our connection and chat that way, right? Um, and I found him, but there's no way, no time for a whale, anything. I started typing, you know, holy hell, WTF is going on style stuff, and he just tearsly replied he had to go. So because of our lack of dating points, we don't have a relationship with Chess, so he doesn't respond. This means, uh, I'm curious at some point to try out an Alice build that has max ranks with dating, maybe get some cool stuff going on there. But since we can't go to chess because we don't have any leads there, we go online to see what's going on. Um, okay, of course I tried, but it was futile. The phone network was completely overworked, but the net still worked fine. So what'd you find? The net was still working, but the bandwidth was severely lacking. The major news networks were either down or overloaded, but all the big search engines defaulted to some kind of government site in super simple HTML. That kind of confirmed it really was the real deal. Isn't the net supposed to be some kind of DARPA invention anyway? Wouldn't be surprised if they had some kind of system in place to take over if need be. Well, they hadn't taken it over. You could still go wherever you wanted. Facebook still worked. Apocalypse proof service. Nice. It was insane. I tried to get in touch with my brother. He's the only one who's even got an account. But there was no reply. I spammed my aunts and sent an email to my mother. But I don't know. It felt like I needed to find someone right there and then. And? A group chat. It was spreading through our social network like wildfire. Someone had found the closest old fallout shelter that was actually still operable, down on 3rd. People were going there, just grabbing all they could and running before the bombs fall. So what happened next? You know, I did find you online. That must, that must have been useless. I'm all the way over in Old Blighty. <laughs> Unless things were different in, our, in your dream. No, you were still in the UK. The bombs had already started falling there. We, you, you, you disappeared. There was nothing more to do. It was only a dream, Al. Sure. So then what? So then we go to the fallout shelter because it seems like the best option. The old fallout shelter was done on third, it wasn't far. Close enough to walk, anyway. Did you think to bring anything? Oh, right, yes. I grabbed the biggest bag I had. A backpack, right. We already went over the bag. And, um, we have less options now. We don't have the options of a map. We have a watch now, instead of our pass. Um... I can't remember which stat it is. One of the stats influences how, kind of how resourceful you are. So we don't have a map. We don't have uh, spare clothes or a sleeping bag. But because we put those two ranks into that other skill, we can take everything, which is cool. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to need anything unless something better happens. Because on my off-camera runs, this runs after the new thing, I died the same way anyway. So, crowbar. Don't question me my crowbar, Mad H. Uh, also, the good thing is, after, uh, after, so I believe, I believe, like I said, I got the crowbar after having failed five runs. 
uh, a new Steam Achievement started counting up towards 10 failed runs, so we'll see what unlocks then. I haven't gotten it quite yet, but I believe this may be run 9 or 10. Uh, so yeah, you could say that. God, that shelter. So, I headed towards the shelter from my apartment. I'll admit I was still kind of hoping it was all just some kind of big false alarm, and by tomorrow everything would be back to normal. Like an extreme version of Orson Welles' War of the Worlds broadcast. Actually, the panic that radio show caused was greatly exaggerated, probably by Wells himself, and it worked. We still remember it today. Great ad campaign. Guess that English lit degree is coming to some use at least. Yeah, well, it didn't really feel like it. I remember trying to think of words to describe the way the streets felt, the way the city sounded. Turmoil, chaos, anarchy, tumult, pandemonium. The capital of hell. Now who's got a degree in lit? Nice. Uh, stop stalling. Yeah, it's just... So fucking damn. Like I said, everything felt so real. The panic in the streets, the accidents everywhere with no emergency responders showing up, and the ever-present siren. It was like everyone walking, walked with their eyes to the sky, just expecting to see a flash. Did you make it to the shelter okay? The shelter was actually in the basement of a bar. They used it as storage, which was handy since there was a door towards the street. But there was no signs of anything like that anymore. I just knew about it from the Facebook conversation. Okay, wait, isn't that the bar you always go to? The RAD bar? Heh, <laughs> yeah. Go on, Alice, did you get in? I went to what I thought was the side door. It wasn't the kind of alleyway I'd usually hang out in. I could just imagine junkies and hobos sleeping among these tra those trash bags. Anyway, the suspense is killing me. So I knocked on the door and then immediately tried the handle. It was locked, nothing happened for a while, and then the door opened, just a bit, and she stuck her head out. She? The Bitch Queen. She was this red-headed chick who was taking charge of everything in there. She was the one who originally posted about the place, so I guess she felt she owned it somehow. She stood there in the doorway, looking me over, and then basically said, We're full. Like it was an exclusive club. I can't believe they just keep you out for no good reason. Was it actually full? Ha! Not a chance. There was a sign on the door that said, Capacity 100. There was no way there was 100 people in there already. I said as much. She didn't reply. I guess you didn't just let it be at that. Uh, so, um, on the off-camera runs, I've selected this every time, so I'm gonna keep doing that. I tried talking my way in. You can't just leave me out here, and so forth. She just repeated that they were full, and that there wasn't enough food for any- for any more. That I should try to find some other place to hide. Stone cold bitch, indeed. I tried telling her I wouldn't be a burden. I had brought food. I opened my bag and showed her. You're nicer than I would be. What did she say? I wasn't being nice, I was being desperate. I was trying to figure out the rules of this sudden new reality. She hesitated. Then she said, all right, but you will have to share. A bribe, huh? How tempting. What was your answer? I decided to take the queen up on her offer. So she let me slip in, closing the door behind me with a bang. And we're in the fallout shelter. This place is pumping. I barely had time to get my bearings before she started taking command again, telling me to hurry up and to empty my bags. Empty your bags? She had some kind of notion she should be in charge of the supplies. And what did you say to that? I talked to her about it politely. Seems reasonable. I wasn't there to fight, I just wanted to get through it. So what, did she rob you of everything you owned or what? I was ready to start arguing with her about that, politely of course, but it turned out she just wanted to make inventory. She very carefully wrote down everything we had with us, from clothes to food to blankets. With us. Interesting. Huh. I'm not saying she wasn't prissy about it, but I understood. Everyone was stressed out. What about the others in there? Were they supposed to be bossed around by her? I think most of them were too shell-shocked to think about that. Someone was in charge. That was enough for most. Did you make any new friends? Mainly old friends. I hadn't been the first there. We mingled. So see, these are our resources, I guess. This is, I'm not sure, this is power, which we've never gotten. This is radiation-ness. This is food, obviously. And this is, like, our posse. Did she leave you alone afterwards? The place had been, had maybe 20 people in it, us included. But she stayed away from most of the rest of us. So yes, she did. Were you the last to arrive? No. Soon after us, there were some others. These she let in without trouble, embracing one of them. This big burly guy with a motorcycle jacket. Someone you knew? Actually, yes. Ray was his name. He lived pretty close. I mainly knew him for his love of motorcycles. I had no idea he knew the bitch queen. But the place was still empty. Yeah. Soon after, though, there was another knock, and this time the bitch queen tried to do the same thing she did with me. What did you do? 
I stepped in. This was unacceptable. Actually, uh, I can't remember which one I chose. I might have chosen I protested naturally. I believe they're pretty much the same. Let's go with protested anyway. Yeah. Brave of you to speak up. What did you say? I tried appealing to her hum <laughs> I tried appealing to who her humanity and to her common sense. What else could I do? But she wouldn't listen. She kept repeating we were full to the people outside. Did you just let that stand? The look she gave me told me to fuck off right then and there. So you just backed down? No. Fuck her. Damn right. When I raised my voice at her, she just turned red. What was your approach? Did I mention I was damned fit in this dream because I maxed my fitness? I didn't give her a chance to protest. I just pushed her away and opened the door to the people outside. She tried jumping me. Catfight? Hey, she jumped me. I was just doing the right thing. I didn't have time to sock her or anything. It was just a moment of fending her off and then Ray was there pulling her off me. Uh-huh. He told us both to calm the fuck down. All the while, people from outside were streaming in. That's when she gave me the ultimatum. Shut the hell up or get the hell out. You should have seen her. Hair a mess, face red, got a full posse. What did you do? I took what friends I had and left. I'm curious what this option is. I'm very, very curious what this option is, but I'm going to show you guys this option because I want to... I, I, I wasn't deliberately trying to do new stuff off camera. It just kind of happened as these things do. I stepped back from the door, the sound of it slamming shut still echoing in my ears. It was the sound of desperation. I knew there'd be no more opening it. I had to think of something else. What did the others think? They all looked to me for some reason. It was... Pretty weird. I didn't really think of myself as the leader type, and I only have one rank in the social skill, so I'm not sure exactly how uh, much that's giving me. So what did you do with them, together, somewhere else? I was pretty sure they'd follow me, but the thought of me as a leader, I don't know, it scared me. I thought about maybe heading off by myself instead. So realistically, what were your options? Uh, I, uh, I could leave town, leading the group. My little post-apocalyptic group of survivors, did you have any idea what to do? Well, we needed to get out of the downtown area fast, which left us with a few options. The streets? I can imagine they must have been pretty bad. You live centrally, don't you? Yep. And yep, the streets were bad. Really bad. Accidents everywhere, gridlocked as far as the eye could see. Panic, bedlam, awful. So no buses, no metro, and you don't own a car, correct? That's right. And neither did any of the others, but we had a few options. One was to start walking until we got out of the gridlocked zone, steal the car, blah, 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 before, right. So... These are the options we've seen before. We're gonna walk past the worst, and then we're going to steal a car. And um, because we're super fit and have a crowbar, this is gonna go very smoothly. Okay, you're not gonna be terribly proud of me, but I did have a crowbar. The perfect tool for a car thief. But didn't you say people were just leaving their cars unlocked and opening a panic? Yeah, that's not how I ended up using the crowbar. See, I figured I needed something big and strong, right? So as I was looking, I came across this Hummer, parked by the side of the road. Doors open, lights on, engine on, perfect. No need for a crowbar at all, unless you smashed its windows in just for being a Hummer. I didn't need the crowbar to break into it, no. I was just about to step, slip inside when I heard an angry shout behind me. I turned around and saw this man running towards me, apoplectic with rage, get out of my car, etc. We saw this before, right. Uh, I was in total fight or flight mode, but I guess the heavy blunt implement in my hand let the fight part take over. I raised the crowbar at him and, I don't know, something in my crazy posture must have convinced him I was going to hurt him. He stopped. Dang it. I right clicked. That was my finger just spasmed. I feel really bad about that. But the point is, we intimidated him off with a crowbar. Our posse didn't help at all. Whoa, an hour after the announced apocalypse and you're already looking like you're ready to bash a head in for a ride. Jesus Christ, Alice. Believe me, I thought the same thing. Also, the guy chased after me. I mean, I had just stolen his car, so I had to lose him first. Since traffic was moving so slowly, he could have easily caught up with me. A truly accomplished car thief. I'd lost some time, but I had a car, and traffic was moving. The roads were actually open. Well, no, everything was still extremely gridlocked, but the cars were at least moving without needing extra nudging. Getting caught on the freeway during the explosion doesn't seem like a good time, though. What was your plan? So the, um... If we click, I wasn't going to stop for anything. We basically end up going onto the freeway, encountering heavy, heavy traffic, and dying in an explosion there. If we take the first available exit to shelter, this puts us back at the um, the the subway scene. Uh, so we're going with the second one, which I believe will spit us back out at 
uh, basically towards the um, radiation thing, the place you know where they sorted us last time. And so I'm trying to, I'm still trying to figure that part out, the part with the bridge. So we'll tr let's try and work our way through that, I guess. You actually made it that far. How long was it until the bombs actually hit? I'm not entirely sure, but something like two hours. I think they hit everywhere else before they hit us. I'm not really sure why. Missile shield? Do we have one of those? Anyway, I knew that I was pushing my luck trying to get any further, so I started looking for likely shelter, stat. I parked the car and got out. One of the others suggested a friend's place. The burrows have a lot of those suburban white picket fence type houses, and it was one of those no one was at home, but when we tried the front door it was unlocked. We went in. Huh, you're lucky as hell then. If what I heard about Americans and their castle doctrine is true, what if there'd been someone standing there with a shotgun? I don't know, a shotgun to the gut or a nuclear bomb searing off your face? I'm not sure which would be worse. Point is, four walls was better than none. Fair point. So, how did it go? Well, I tried looking for a basement, but the place didn't have one, so we just tried building a little fort out of furniture in the living room, hoping the roof wouldn't come crashing down. What about, like, food and things? Whatever the cupboard contained, we took with us to our shelter, of course, and tried to protect it as best we could. Boom! All sorts of food. So see, I, things are looking really good right now on paper. So, the bombs. They actually hit then, in the dream? The first thing that happened was the windows blew in. I just closed my eyes and pulled up my knees and made myself as small as possible. The bombing continued for... I don't know how long, but aside from the windows, we seemed to be pretty okay. So it was worth it to go all the way out of town then? That pulse, I'm not sure why. I didn't want to think about what it was like downtown. It was scary enough out there. A few cars drove past and I heard sirens. At one point, I ventured out to glance out the window. Once the bombs had stopped hitting and I saw a city center in flames. But at least you got out. How long did you wait in the house? Um... So... Last time, I chose for 24 hours, because of these three, for as long as supplies lasted, I wasn't planning on leaving, 24 hours seems like the shortest one, because my goal is to get... <coughs> Sorry. My goal is to get out of radiation as soon as possible. Um, however, this didn't really seem to work. We still got hit with some radiation. Supplies lasting seems bad. Wasn't planning on leaving, this seems worse. Um, so I really don't know. Um, historic, I mean, so far I've been choosing the same options to show you guys, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna just... I guess I'll do it. Uh, I can try one of these again l later. I'm burning with curiosity. Right now, though, is the problem. Uh, that's a good 24 hours. So see, we got some radiation. I don't know how safe the house was from fallout, really. Windows blasted open and all that. But it was probably safer than walking the streets. And as long as I only ate the uncontaminated food, it ought to be okay, I thought. What about the others? Did they have their own food? No, we had to share. All the food we had on us really did go, and in the end we even had to supplement a bit from the cupboards. I'm sure it was fine. So you ate through all of your supplies, and then... We ate all the supplies anyway. Um, let's just keep going. I don't really care about chests in this relationship build. L relationship this build. There were a lot of other survivors on the road as well, and soon enough, the rumors started circulating. There was a government evacuation center set up in the old college. Everyone was going there. So yes, we've seen this before. Uh, the old college. These options at the river's in the way. We need to find a bridge. Blah, blah, blah. The bridge is guarded by people. Let's just skip to that decision. So we're going to um, confront them. Although I believe the sad face means, I mean, this is all for naught. So we have different options now, I believe. Or different, I mean, a slightly different situation. Because we're not going up alone this time. We're going up with a gang of people and we have a lot of food. Uh, so what do we do? These are the same options before, but an extra option now of I explained me and mine were going through and there was nothing they could do about it. I chose this one <laughs> and it leads to a gang fight. Which basically means you lose your entire posse. Um, I don't know if that I really care about that at all, harsh as that may be. But I mean, they're they're nameless stick figure people. I'm not overly attached to them. I'm gonna see what happens if I choose the first one this time to see if I can just talk my way through. I suspect nothing's gonna really come of this, and we'll have to resort to fighting our way through anyway. So let's try this one. I told them we had enough food and didn't need to steal theirs. I told him the truth. No, we had nothing. I opened my pack to show him, and he grabbed it, emptying it out and rifling through the contents. So much for a concerned citizen. So what'd you do then? 
They told me I was just a looter and that I should fuck off. At least they gave me my backpack back. To which you replied, Boom! It's on. War time. Whoa there, what about all the guns? It's not like I had planned it, but I knew they'd follow my example. All I had to do was get close enough and then... I yanked the leader's shotgun out of his hands and yelled, ATTACK! Like I was William Wallace, while smashing them in, ATTACK! No wait, uh, I can't do a good uh, Mel Gibson impression. It's not, he's not Sean Connery. He's no Sean Connery. Uh, that'd be way better. That'd be a way different movie. Anyway, he'll attack like I was William Wallace. While smashing the bastard's face in with the butt of the thing. Jesus, what is this? Mad Max? <laughs> More Mel Gibson. Good references. Like I thought, the others joined in, charging at the ramparts. I turned the gun around, but there was nothing much to do. They were already swarming everywhere. No casualties. There were a lot of shots initially, but for some reason I'd thought they were all misses. They weren't. We lost a lot of good people. Boom, just into one, one little groupie. Was it worth it? I don't know. But we controlled the bridge at any rate. Well, I can't say I condone it, but you did get through. Yeah, and ahead, the evacuation center. So we're back at the evacuation center. We have lots of food. I don't think that matters at all. We have a posse person. Again, I don't think that matters at all. We have a bit of the radiation sickness, which is bollocks. So what are our options? Everything's hazy. News was sporadic and often hearsay. There's a lot of talk about the missile defense system. Maybe they knew about that. We already read this before about the percentage. Men in blast masks and Geiger counters. Okay, two doors at the end of the corridor, went left or left, you went left, what about your crew? Some went left, some went right, depending on, it didn't matter. There were no more groups, just the living and the dead, so we have no buddies anymore. After that check, they give us new threads. Honestly, they mostly look like prison guard, but at least they were not radioactive. All of our old stuff would be disposed of. I think they just gave them to the poor people going right. I saw them through the fence heading indeed rather before, that's really sick, can't even imagine. Pra pragmatism, earthly paradise, send us... Um... Wait, 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 what? Did I just skip reading things that were very important? I assumed we were reading the same thing. Did I go left instead of right? I apologize for misreading, but it, it would appear that uh, we didn't get stuffed into the um, football stadium to be left to rot, which I'm... For some reason, my brain is telling me that is what, exactly what happened last time. It's not happening this time, which is very good news, but I'm baffled as to why. Let us capitalize on this good fortune. So, didn't find Chess and his sister. No, I searched, harboring some vague hope that maybe they'd made it, but no. I suppose it was a long shot anyway. Still, not an unhappy ending, I suppose. Was it the end? No. No, it wasn't. Do go on. Did you rebuild society or something? How much longer is this dream? Should we maybe continue tomorrow, like a part two or something? That would be cool as a good way for me to um, have a pseudo save point system. No, no, it's almost over, but this is when it gets weird. Remember the music I heard on the radio before falling asleep? Yep. So, I was taking a walk between buildings and enjoying the fine weather since they had given a fallout all clear. They sprayed the lawns daily and checked them for rads. When I heard it again, Kind of like you'll turn the sound of thunder into explosions in a dream. No, or maybe. Actually, yes. That's not a bad analogy. The music was a connection between the dream and the real world. When I heard it, it was like... Like I suddenly remembered that I once had the dream I was currently having. I remember, in the dream, thinking of how incredibly unlikely that was. It was... It was weird, okay? Dreams are weird. So, the music, where did it come from? It came from the admin building. It's this big place where the rector's office and a bunch of other offices, no teaching spaces, off to the side a bit close to the stadium. I shouldn't have heard it by any means, yet somehow I did. Actually, I wonder, I did get an achievement for dying before entering the admin's building. The achievement was for, for being like so close, because I, I made it that far but then died. I wonder if having that achievement changes things. That would be interesting. Uh, I walked closer, but that building wasn't a part of our turf. The doors were all under lock and key, and there was a fence cutting off the main entrance. But I knew it can- but I knew it can from- oh, came from there. Okay, so what did you do? I just knew there was some connection there, some truth hidden in the tunes. Something that would allow me to wake up from this nightmare, because that's what it was. Every single aching, painful, awful moment of it. But it was beyond locked doors, inside a building presumably filled with men with guns. This is a very dark tower. You got this far, was there really nothing you could do? 
Not unless I came up with some way of breaking through solid metal doors with nothing but my bare hands. But I stood there and listened to the music. That's when I... I felt I knew this was in a dream. This wasn't real, or... It was, but it wasn't all that was real. That there was an alternative version of this dream where I'd done things differently, where my life had been different up until this moment, and as a result I had ended up somewhere else, in the stadium with the sick, or somehow inside that building. Some kind of multiverse theory applied to strange realistic dreams. If there's an endless number of dimensions, who's to say there's not one where dreams are more real than reality? Anyway, no, more like... I remembered having made certain choices, certain choices about what I wanted to do with my life, how I was going to spend my time, and all those choices, and a million others, had led up to this moment. This moment of helpless separation. But that if... But but that if... I'm assuming it's an I. But if... Something had done differently... Things would be different. Bravo, that's kind of how the arrow of time works. You do X today, and maybe Y happens tomorrow. Do Y today, and maybe Z happens. Yeah, except, what if you can foresee where the arrow of time is going to hit? What then? You're saying you had a prophetic dream. That's what I'm saying. The dream ended shortly after that, because I knew I was in a dream, and I knew I had somehow ended up wrong. I don't want to talk about how I ended things, but it wasn't difficult. And then I woke up. Oh, suicide out, blue pill. Uh, okay, so that went very different than I expected. I'm not sure what choices I can make differently. I'm going to try and get back to that point again with default Alice to see what happens, because I'm very curious. Um, I don't expect things to go well with default Alice. I suspect there's other things we have to do first with default, Al default Alice. Perhaps things relationship-based? I'm not sure, but uh, that's going to end this episode, so I will see you guys in the next episode, the plot is thickening. Actually, one second before in this episode, let me see. Show me the Steam achievement. Was that 10 deaths or 9? Come on, red nettle. You nettle me so. That was 10. I live! I die! I live again! So, that was 10 deaths. Theoretically, things will be different next time, and I'm curious to see what they are. Join me, will you, tomorrow on an amazing adventure. <laughs> Signature catchphrase.